Hello and thank you uh, for watching this next exercise uh, looking at another hypothesis test on a true population mean. Uh, this time we are not going to assume that we know the population standard deviation. Sigma is unknown and so as you might guess this means we are using the t-distribution. So similar to um, using the t-distribution when we are only working with a single population, uh, here again we have to deal with these degrees of freedom. Uh, now unlike working with one population, there's two different formulas that we're going to be needing, uh, well one of two formulas that we'll be needing for degrees of formula in this case. One is very easy, the other will be uh, your least favorite formula, I think, of all of these videos so far. Uh, I'll show you, well, you'll see it when we get there. It's the one video, it's the one um, formula that I can never memorize, no matter how many times I teach this course. So I have it written on a little post-it note over here just to, just to help me out. Okay, so let's get into it. Uh, a friend once told you that Golden Retrievers are a much faster breed of dog than Border Collies. Uh, as a dog lover, you become interested in determining whether or not the data would support such a claim. Assume you manage to gather 24 Golden Retrievers and 32 Border Collies for a 100 meter dog race. After the race you gather all the times. You'll find the average time for the Golden Retriever is 10.5 seconds and for the Border Collies 11.3 seconds. You calculate sample standard deviations to be 1.3 and 0.8 uh, for each of these two breeds of dog. Now, formulate the uh, formulate a hypothesis to test your friend's claim. Okay, so what are we going to do? We'll start off same as always, null and alternative. And what are we going to be testing? Well, our friend claimed, there is it, a friend told us that golden retrievers are faster than border collie. So I'm going to write this out, mu1, mu2, mu1, mu2, faster. If I'm thinking I, I want to test that one is faster than another, then I want to test that its time is smaller uh, than the other. So to me, in my mind, that sounds like a lower tail test, which is dependent on this being the golden retrievers and this being the border collie. So again, I am formulating this as a lower tail test based on those definitions. You could write this as an upper tail test and you would just have to switch these around. Either one would be correct. To me, a lower tail test just sounds more logical. Uh, and we could also write this as mu1 smaller than mu2, mu1 uh, not smaller than mu2. Okay, and I again I write it like this only when the hypothesized difference uh, is zero. So why do we, okay, justify the equation? Well, if, um, if our evidence supports the null hypothesis, and that means that I cannot support my friend's claim, I do not have evidence to show that the retrievers are any faster than the border collies, or alternatively, I can say that the border collies are at least as fast uh, as the golden retrievers. And if the evidence supports the alternative hypotheses, then uh, I can support my friend's claim that, yeah, it sounds as though on average retrievers are a faster breed of dog, at least in this 100 meter race. So let's uh, move on. We'll do this test. Uh, lack, of, uh, lack of information given, we'll do it at a 0.05 level of significance. So the next step just to uh, calculate our test statistic. So here, this formula you'll find that looks very similar to the other. Um, the only difference here is that the notation is going to reflect the fact that we're using um, the sample standard deviation. So this is going to be s squared n1, uh, s2 squared n2. And then when I enter in my numbers, so this x1, remember that was my golden retriever. So this is their speed was 10.5 seconds, minus x2 was the border collies, and I'll put in this hypothesized difference of zero, it doesn't change anything, I just like to add it there just to be complete, uh, it's consistent with the formula. Now this is going to be S1, so that's my golden retriever, so that's this one, 3 squared over, I have 24 golden retrievers, and this is 0.8 squared, and I have uh, 32 border collies. 
So let's, uh, let's just plug in our numbers. I'm going to do the denominator first. Um, and I'm actually going to actually use it again. You'll see where this formula is going to pop up again. So it's helpful sometimes to write down intermediate steps, especially if you need to reuse the information again. Squared divided by 24 plus 0.8 squared divided by 32. I'm going to write this number down. You might not see why just yet. Uh, but it might come up again. So I'm going to write down 0.090. I'll just scribble it in over here, 090. Because that is going to maybe save us a little bit of time later on. Okay, so that's just in my denominator, and then I'm going to square root that. So I have uh, 0 0.300 in the denominator. 003. Uh, oh, sorry, I wrote that backwards. 300. And our numerator is 10 point, oops, 10.5 minus 11.3, negative 0.8. And so this gives us finally a test statistic, 0.8 divided by 0.3, 2.67, negative 2.67. Okay, so that's actually the easy part now, doing that calculation. Because the next step, uh, so we have part B, so this is our test statistic negative 267. Our next step is to use the p-value approach. Well, of course, using the t-distribution, we need to know first what are our degrees of freedom. And this is the part that you might not like. I'm just going to scroll down because this formula is going to take up some space. So the degrees of freedom for this exercise is going to be S1 squared over N1, oops, even with it written down, I still make a mistake, plus S2 squared over N2, all of that squared. Now you see why I've written it down, because that's uh, inside those brackets. I've already got that calculated. And then down here, this is 1 minus N1 minus 1 times S1 squared over N1 squared plus N2 minus 1 N2 minus 1 S2 squared over N2 all that squared okay so it's a little bit tedious now thankfully we don't have to use this formula all the time we only need this formula uh, when the two variances the two population variances are assumed to be unequal. Or if, we're, if we can't assume that they are equal, then we have to use this formula. If, and only if, if I put two Fs, it's if and only if those two variances are, are equal, or we have good reason to assume that they're equal, then degrees of freedom become simply N1 plus N2 minus 2. So a much easier calculation. Uh, in that case. Now here, we're not told anything about the population variances. We're going to assume that they're not equal. So we're going to go through this calculation. It's only fair. I make my students do this. I guess it's, it's only fair that I have to do it sometime too. So if I plug in our numbers, I've already got all the information. Just uh, I'm going to use everything that's right in here. I've got my variances and my sample sizes right up there. So this is going to be 1.3 squared over 24 plus S2, oops, 0 0.8 squared over 32. All of that squared divided by 1 minus, this is 23, and minus 1. This is 1.3 squared over 24. That's squared again. This is 1 minus, uh, or sorry, 32 minus 1, so this is 31 times 0.8 squared over 32, and all that is squared again. So I already have, this is why I wrote down this 0 0.09, because that's what's inside, that's what's inside these brackets here. So all I need to do for my numerator is to square that again, because I've got this square up here. So if I get my calculator out, 
this is going to be 0 0.090 squared is my numerator, so 0 0.0081, oops, let me do that again just to be safe, square 0 0.0081, good, oh. come on, go away, 0 0.0081 is my numerator, now down below I'm going to do this in pieces, uh, there will be some rounding error, but we're never going to be all that precise when we're working with uh, with the t-distribution anyways. So here I'll uh, just do these bits down below. So this is going to be 1.3 squared divided by 24 equals, and then that's squared, and then I divide that by 23, so times 1 over 23. I divide that by 23, and that gives me a very small value, 0 0.000, there's 4, that'll be 0 0.0002 plus, let's get this other one, let's keep a, f yeah, that'll be fine. And this is 0.8 squared divided by 32 equals squared divided by 31. And then I'm going to add to that this other bit that we've already got, 0 0.0002 equals, so there's, <laughs> there's my denominator, point uh, is 4 decimals, so that's 0 0.002, so that doesn't change much at all. Point, oops, so it was point zero zero eighty one divided by zero point zero 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 two, and this is going to be. Jeez, my phone is vibrating like crazy. I don't know if you can hear that. Point zero zero eighty one divided by point zero 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 two. So all we have there we go forty. All that just to give us forty. Well, forty point five. So let's round that to 41 degrees of freedom. It's an awful calculation, right? Totally understand if you hate that one. Hopefully you just fast forwarded through it and didn't watch every single step of the way. So all of that, just to say, and we come back up here, I have 41 degrees of freedom. Well, that's great. Now what do we do? We go to our T tables and we want to look up our test statistic. You're going to hate me for this because now we go to our t distribution and wouldn't you know it there's a bunch of mess on there from a previous exercise if we go and look for 41 degrees of freedom after all of that well it's not even there the closest we have is 40. so not very precise when we're using these tables but that's as good as we can get so we want to use this now to find our test statistic, which was 2.67. Now this is a negative test statistic, but that's okay. All of our values here are positive, but again, this is a perfectly symmetric distribution. So if I look at positive 2.67, this will give me the area in that upper tail, and that's fine because that will be exactly the same as the area in the lower tail below negative 2.67. And this is a lower tail test, and so that lower tail, that's the probability that we want. So if I look in this row, uh, and I'm looking for 2.67, it's somewhere in between here. And so our probabilities, in this case our p-value, because this is just a one tail test, so that p-value is something less than 0 0.01, something greater than 0 0.005. So if we come back over to here, where do we go? If we come back over to here, my p-value we determined is less than 0 0.01. And if we are doing this test at the alpha 0.05 level of significance, well now this is sufficiently strong evidence that we can reject that null hypothesis and the evidence does support our friend's claim. He said that golden retrievers are a faster dog. I formulated the hypotheses to, uh, as the alternative hypotheses would, would show that if the evidence supports the alternative, 
that means that, yeah, it tells us that the golden retrievers are the faster dog. P-value is very small. We can comfortably reject because it is so much smaller than alpha. And so our evidence does support our friend's claim. Good. Let's, um, let's I guess I just did part D, or part E, the interpretation. So now let's just quickly verify our conclusion with the critical value approach. So now this is where we go to our T tables. We look for T alpha with so many degrees of freedom. For us, this is T with a 0.05 level of significance and 41 degrees of freedom. We round it to 40 anyways. And here's alpha. So this comes down on that critical value. So here it's 1.684, but remember this is a lower tail test. Our rejection space is in the lower tail, so this is going to be negative 1.684. So in this distribution, negative 1.684 is somewhere in here. And of course we reject for any test statistic less than that one. And so again, good, we've got uh, We've got consistent, oops, we've got consistent results with the critical value approach and the p-value approach. Both of them quite strongly support the alternative hypotheses. Okay, that's it. Lots of little calculations in there. Uh, doing little time savers like what we did here, recognizing that, you know, I don't want to have to calculate this twice. I'm going to need it again when we, when we go through this other calculation that can be helpful, especially during exams if you have uh, uh, time constraints. So, okay, now I feel like I'm losing my voice. So I guess it's a good time to uh, finish this video. So thanks for watching, and uh, we'll uh, do another one here quick. Okay, bye-bye.